Hello and welcome to Coin Lady channel. We've been sounding the alarm about this for over two years, but community keep insisting it won't happen. However, ETH is now the subject of a new lawsuit, which claims it is a security. Check out the decrypt headline below. State of New York files suit against Qcoin, alleging that Ethereum is a security. I don't want that to happen at the moment. The assault on ETH is something they actively seek to avoid. This is my first time buying cryptocurrency, and I decided to start with Ethereum. This view has remained constant throughout my life. Ever since last year's November 10 TH, I've been keeping it. I don't want the attack to spread, but as an excerpt holder, and I'm sure I'm not alone in this, I have to tell you, it's so frustrating that we've been sounding the alarm for over two years, and what have we gotten from the rest of the crypto community? That's not quite true. Of course, I'm aware that there have been some incredibly pleasant exceptions to this rule. Yet, in the grand scheme of things, what have we accomplished? For the better part of two years, we've heard from a sizable group of people who take great pleasure in the fact that excerpt holders have suffered financial losses due to the SEC's assault on Ripple. People are making ideological arguments based on emotion rather than reason, and these arguments make no sense at all. Just an open assault on their part. What have we been discussing, with attorney John Deaton taking the lead? Frankly, certainly from an action-based perspective rather than just speaking, he has taken action here, and attorney John Deaton has said for a long time that had it been Ethereum that the SEC went after rather than Ripple and XRP holders, he stated that he would have been just as outraged and defending the Ethereum community just like he ended up doing with the XRP community. If the situation were reversed, he would have taken that action, and he made good on his promise to do so here as soon as the news broke, which was only yesterday. In the same day, attorney John Deaton organized a group of people to file a class action lawsuit. He's in the press, so he's expecting I don't know exactly where he's in terms of the technical filing of it, but he's doing it and he's 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 seeking to represent all sorts of people. I'm going to show you that in a second here, too. And this is an open assault. After being financially hurt as a result of the SEC, you still have a surprised XRP price, a suppressed XRP price today, and I think it's reasonable for us to, like, feel the frustration that we just feel from all these participants that were not helping us in the XRP community gleeful about our terrible financial situation. We can be angry at them and issue warnings, but we must ultimately change our minds and come together. And it's okay to indulge in a little bit of I told you so moment, after all, it is somewhat difficult to avoid doing so. But we still need to get together, rally together as united crypto community in a broad sense, end the damn tribalism, and press on, because doing so is the morally correct thing to do. To that end, allow yourself to experience some anger. Yes, so do I. I believe the majority of you feel the same way, but we have to get over it and continue to just move forward. So, I'll relay some of the feedback I've received from legal professionals like John Deaton, Jeremy Hogan, and others. But before we go any further, I do want to clarify something. I come from a completely illegitimate and non-financial background. By no means should you base any purchasing or selling decisions on anything I say or write, I'm not a licensed attorney or financial advisor. I'm just a fan who occasionally posts videos to YouTube about crypto-related subjects for fun and as a hobby. Alright, then. Let's dive in, then. Qcoin, a cryptocurrency exchange, is being sued by the state of New York for allegedly breaking the state's securities and commodities laws. In the complaint, Attorney General Letitia James makes the shocking claim that Ethereum, the second largest cryptocurrency by market capitalization, is also a USD security, as was previously alleged by the United States Securities and Exchange Commission. Among the first times a regulator has asserted in court that ETH, one of the largest cryptocurrencies, is a security, this case illustrates the importance of the concept. The statement for today read. The petition claims that ETH, like Luna and USD, is a speculative asset that depends on the efforts of third-party developers to generate profits for its holders. This is a direct quote. And so on. This is one of the many things that has always irritated me about this topic, if something is going to have value, it is because humans value it. If you want people to appreciate something, you have to explain why. Since it seems to be active, that would make sense. 
How, then, does something manufactured in this way go about carrying out its intended functions? How does a cryptocurrency function, for example? Oh well, they're just going to build on top of it. So, tell me, why are you here? When a cryptocurrency is created, its creators remain anonymous. We also need to ensure that no one ever adds any technology on top of that in an effort to make it useful. Developers adding more functionality to any cryptocurrency is unacceptable. As a result, the value placed on a set of two would rise. Obviously, this is a completely false argument. And that's why, when I consider the future of XRP or any other cryptocurrency, really, I look for a thriving ecosystem in which numerous stakeholders and developers are banding together to boost the cryptocurrency's utility. I believe that where there is utility, capital will eventually follow. The claim made here is that there are those working to create something that will attract financial reward. That's a major issue. There's more to the story with ETH, though, as I'm sure you all know, ETH made the switch to proof of stake in September. In fact, the day before this news came out, I posted a video I made. In my opinion, it was. It's worth noting that Gary Gensler came out against proof of stake on the same day Ethereum made the switch suggesting that there's a very good chance that proof-of-stake systems are in violation of securities laws. The fact that these two events coincide on the same day is a miracle, right? In any case, the ceasefire holds. The New York Attorney General has filed suit against Qcoin, claiming that the company has misled customers by posing as an exchange when in fact it is a broker-dealer for securities and commodities. Its goal is to prevent New York-based users from accessing the exchange by compelling Qcoin to implement IP and geolocation-based geofencing on its website. We finally reach the meat of the matter of paragraph or two down. The lawsuit claims that the cryptocurrency ETH is a security because, among other things, its holders can now profit from simply holding the asset. The lawsuit claims that since the network switched to a proof-of-stake consensus, ETH holders have had a direct line from their holdings to potential earnings through staking rewards. You know, we should have seen this coming a mile away. Absolutely, we did. Even though Billy Boy Hinman claimed it was the security in a talk he gave at the Yahoo! Financial Summit on June 14 th, 2018, all that security turned out to be was a sham. Well, that settles it. That is certainly the case in order to steer the market in a specific course. The market as a whole was expected to react as if the SEC had issued a formal ruling, despite the fact that there was only one line. Disclaimer These are my own personal thoughts. What did we learn from the major networks and newspapers? A lot of headlines said it was an SEC order, and others said it was just as many. This led to a great deal of chaos. To add insult to injury, there's no reason to air your dirty laundry in such a public forum. Why didn't you go back and tell the market to whoa, 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 when you realized that people weren't understanding what was going on? That statement was not made by the SEC. That's just how I feel. Why did that not take place? Why didn't he just come back out and fix that? Mainly because he never did. Take a look at this headline from the day after Bill Hinman's speech June 15, 2018. As the price of Ether soars, a US SEC official has declared that it is not a security. So, there you have it. There you go, protection for your phony posterior. Finally, here is what John Deaton, an attorney, has to say. Despite popular belief, ETH is not a security. I would have taken the same stance over ETH as I did XRP if the SEC had claimed it was a security. These authorities are completely out of hand. Investors at the retail level should speak up for themselves. As an oath holder, if you're fed up and ready to fight back, sign a blow. I've been following him on Twitter, and I've retweeted everything I've found. I've been retweeting a lot of his tweets, but apparently I missed this one. That's another one I'm going to retweet. In my mind, I had already retweeted the one where he mentioned this site specifically. This was taken immediately before I began filming. However, clicking that link will take you to the ETH class action lawsuit that attorney John Deaton plans to file or has already filed in this jurisdiction. We will not let these career bureaucrats pretend to protect us, he continued, rather, we will seek to have our voices heard in court. We will not give out anyone's name or email address without your permission. 
If you don't have a Google account but still want to join the group it's a Google form, send an email to all deaton at deatonlawfirm.com. So, I figured I'd let you guys know that he's doing this, and here's how to get involved if you're interested. However, John Deaton, an attorney, has been fighting back against these out-of-control regulators, as he calls them. You'd be foolish to discount the possibility of a future attack on ETH coming from the SEC. Given that, I believe, and it may be the case, that they're merely waiting to see what the outcome of the Ripple case brings. But if the SEC were to win this case easily, would you not expect an attack on the Ethereum network and its associated developer community? I mean, either you do or you don't. I ask because it seems likely that this or something similar will be the next target. And why wouldn't it be now? For the simple reason that the shield of the SEC no longer comes from Jay Clayton and Bill Hinman. Even Gary Gensler has a different opinion on the matter. The author, Gary Gensler, claims that any asset that is not Bitcoin is a security. And then there's this from John Deaton's legal team, ETH. When I advocated for a united front, Holder claimed I was spreading fear, uncertainty, and doubt. I take the oath because a single speech by an ex-SEC official doesn't amount to squat unless Congress takes action. If you think the SEC and the New York Attorney General don't work together, you're not paying attention. Because of this, I must say that I agree with John Deaton 100%. The New York Attorney General is taking a stand on whether or not ETH is a security, despite being in a different position than the SEC. However, if you believe the SEC will not comply, you should consider the outcome of the Ripple case. You're in for something else as well. Then there was this from the crypto group led by John Deaton. You penned, this is for everyone who spent the last two years laughing off the Ripple case and dismissing the XRP community's concerns. We are glad to have you here. A group of friends liked it so much that they wrote about it. Let's stop being so tribal right now and work together to win the war on crypto. That's exactly how I feel about it, too. It's frustrating, so I imagine we'll all have similar reactions. It's been warned against. Clearly, it was meant. We will, of course, prove correct. But these folks honestly believed it wouldn't ever circle back to them. They seriously thought that. Okay, well, obviously you were wrong. Everything that isn't Bitcoin is under attack right now. Because Gary Gensler isn't sure who to sue, Bitcoin has remained relatively unscathed. He has no clue as to who created it. And so, we've arrived. In addition, Jeremy Hogan, an attorney, recently shared a clip from a video he made around this time last year in which he made the same kind of warning about the potential consequences for ETH if it were to adopt proof of stake, as it did in September of this year. We warned about the securities dangers inherent in Ethereum 2.0 a year ago, that the lawsuit would come from the NIA came out of left field, as attorney Hogan explained yesterday evening when he posted the minute and 19 second clip. One could only have been in such a New York frame of mind. Yes, he made the correct prediction. In addition, there is this crypto bull tweeted a few days ago that the XRP lawsuit is nearing its end. Ethereum is considered a security in pending litigation. Was I right to buy XRP? Plus, don't you find that fascinating? Where did that come from? We issued a warning to all Ether holders, of which I am one. I want to be absolutely clear, once more. But they've been holding it again since November 10th, 2017. It's the first cryptocurrency I've ever bought, and while I hope no hack occurs, I can't help but reflect on how far away the next one is still two years. This case appears to be coming to a close, and while I'm still cautiously optimistic that the outcome will be favorable for XRP holders, I can't help but wonder if XRP is the only large cap coin in the world with legal clarity. Not even Bitcoin can make that claim. I mean, yes, Gary Gensler made those statements, but there was no official statement from the SEC. Just so you know, Bill Hinman also made some comments before he passed away. Moreover, the current state of ETH appears to be the result of concerted action. So, it seems like XRP might find some answers in a matter of days. Whatever happens, happens. At the same time, however, attacks on ETH are increasing. So perhaps it has its own multi-year journey of legal action ahead of it. I've made it abundantly clear that this is something I strongly disapprove of. 
That's why I think it's great that attorney John Deaton is leading the charge here, jumping on this, and taking action in the form of a class action lawsuit to push back. Another YouTuber and digital asset investor added this comment to the excerpt. He claimed that no one in the cryptocurrency community stepped in to aid the XRP army when Ripple was sued over the cryptocurrency. We've been fighting for well over two years now. I must admit that it is somewhat satisfying to see those who sit back and watch us suffer finally get what they deserve. They aren't worthy of your pity. But what am I going to do? But I will fight for the industry as a whole, something they're unwilling to do for us. After a couple more punches from me, winky face. And. In a way, I sympathize with his position. I wouldn't say my feelings are identical to his, but they are close. For the most part, I'm just annoyed. Not that I wish for anyone else to be hurt, but oh, come on. Given their actions, however, and in light of the widespread attacks on the XRP community, I believe this is a perfectly reasonable reaction. Doesn't it make you feel less sympathetic towards the people who attacked us when they saw that they were attacked in return? That seems like a pretty typical human reaction, no. So, I can see his point of view. Additionally, there is this from ZP Productions, the satirical take on the ZP subreddit. I usually like his stuff, but he has a valid point here. Justin, he writes, Coinbase is not delisting ETH. Strange, I thought, but what's the deal? Coinbase was ready in a matter of days, I forget whether it was one, two, or three. The XRP delisting announcement was made public. In 2020 December, after being sued by the SEC, Ripple made the announcement. Any word on whether or not ETH has been delisted? What hole is it making? Moreover, I'm aware that the SEC has leveled allegations against Ripple, whereas the NIAG is involved here. Nonetheless, the token in question still qualifies as a security. Don't you want to feel secure in times of plenty? Extra care taken. Right. Don't you want to err on the side of caution? To sum up, I'm just saying. Clear evidence of hypocrisy. Simple relisting of XRP is required. God, this is so stupid now. So, there we are, that's the current state of affairs. I appreciate what Attorney Deaton is doing. Obviously, I don't want this to occur, but I also believe that the majority of us share this sentiment. Just like. Straight out of the starting gate. It's just that I don't feel quite as much sympathy as I used to. Then I remember that we need to move past this. I'm sure I'll eventually get over it. You must overcome your sadness. Everyone needs to get over it and start working together again? Absolutely true. In today's world, that's still the responsible thing to do. What a ridiculous day in crypto this is. Can you explain what's happening, please? Thank God I'm not a financial planner. Nothing I say or write should be used as a basis for making any financial decisions. Now, in the end, if you like this video please hit like and subscribe button. See you later, bye.